Today we're gonna to talk about how prospecting and network marketing doesn't have to be hard. So first I'm gonna talk about where to find people. Next I'm gonna say exactly what to say to your prospect, whether you know them or not. And lastly, we're gonna dive into how to stay consistent the absolute key to your success. So I hear from network marketers all the time. I've ran out of people to talk to. I don't know where to find people to talk to. Where do I find people? And so first of all, I just wanna share with you one that you haven't worked through your entire war market, okay? When, and war market being your friends and family. When people tell me that, oh, I've worked my entire war market, they never have but what they've actually done is they've reached out to the people that they know that they're comfortable reaching out to, which is nowhere near their entire warm market. Literally no one has. And if you ever wanna question this, just open up your phone, scroll to the bottom of the contacts, look at that number and ask yourself, have I reached out to that many people ever? And the answer is no, you haven't. And so you have no idea of who's in your phone that's on their hands and knees every single night praying for a solution that you could actually help them with. And so be more addicted to your activity than their response. Be addicted to seeing if they're open to taking a look at what it is that you have versus could I be able to close them or will they judge me? Stop worrying about that. Release your addiction to the outcome and instead get addicted to you asking them. You have no idea who you could be blessing and who's really looking for your product, your service, your opportunity. They're looking to change their life and you could actually help them, but only if you ask. Now, when it comes to cold market, I'll give you some tactical here, right? So the things that both my wife and I did, and by the way, just shout out to my wife, when she was 21 years old, her warm market didn't wanna have anything to do with network marketing, right? In fact, her family also made fun of her. Okay, until she hit $10,000 a month, 100% from cold market prospecting on Facebook, and then her two brothers joined, her mom joined, and her dad built her a little spreadsheet, showed her how to, how to build it. And so just know that you may have people in your warm market that don't wanna join you, and that's okay, you can go cold market. And so I'm gonna give you uh, a couple different strategies here. Number one, just following people that you resonate with. Right? So if you follow, let's say that you resonate with, uh, I don't know, Brene Brown, or you resonate with uh, Robert Kiyosaki or Tony Robbins or Bob Proctor or whoever your guru of choice is, Marie Forleo, she's amazing. By you following them and just paying attention to some of the comments on their pages, you can locate some pretty sharp people. And so if someone drops a sharp comment, and I don't mean a sharp, you know, hate comment, right? I don't wanna, I wouldn't prospect that person, but someone who actually drops an intelligent comment, you can actually send them a little message. And this is what I would say, and this is a, a very real scenario that both my wife and I used to recruit a lot of people into our network marketing business and, and sell a lot of product too. And that is, hey, I saw the comment that you left on Tony Robbins page and listen, I know we don't know each other, um, but uh, I really loved your comment. I'm always looking to work with sharp people. Would you be open and take a look at what I'm doing to make some extra money on the side? And if not, totally cool. And so by you telling them up front, not trying to tiptoe through the tulips and build rapport forever, which is what some people do, and it's very frustrating, not just to the person trying to do it, but also the person receiving it. You know, I've asked so many crowds over the years. I'm like, hey, do you prefer someone that just builds rapport with you for months and months and months and then they ask you the question? Or would you prefer they just get to the point? No one on the planet has ever asked, no, I really like that build rapport piece. I really like them buttering me up for months and then asking me the question. Nobody likes that and it takes too much time. Instead, get to the point and tell them, don't say you should buy my product. Ask if they're open to learning more. Where's the harm in that? If you're a network marketer, I would not use this approach on other network marketers because network marketers are very cannibalistic. They eat their own. And so I would not do this to another network marketer because they're gonna say, wait a minute, you're supposed to build rapport and they're gonna, they're gonna rat you out. They're gonna call you out. And so don't, don't do that. But to most people, the people that aren't in network marketing, this is not an intrusive or spammy method. 
right? And by the way, if you're worried about being their friends, one little sneak trick in Facebook at least is you can comment on their stories. And so if you see that they're doing stories, just drop a quick comment that will actually make you show up in their messenger and, uh, and you go from there. So I mentioned one method and also where to find people, right? Uh, I wanna share with you, so what do you say to, you know, people that, that you just don't know that you're wanting to connect with? Well, understand, like when it comes to cold market prospecting, and by the way, if you're wondering if cold market prospecting works, I shared with you that my wife at the age of 21 built a 10,000 a month income with it, but does it still work now? Or has have the rules changed? Well, one of our students, Christina Danielle, she's the number one recruiter in her company. It happens to be a pet supply company and she doesn't have any pets. And she uses 100% cold market prospecting. So we know that it still works, it's, it's worked for a long time if you do it the right way. Know that when you're reaching out to someone that doesn't know you, they wanna know a few things. Number one, do I know you? And so you wanna actually say that in your message or you run the risk of them responding with, do I know you? Which kinda of takes you off the path. That doesn't lead you toward a sale, kinda of leads you more away. Number two, they wanna know, why are you reaching out to them? Now this is a, an often skipped step. Okay, so why are you reaching out to them specifically? And number three, what do you want? So do I know you? What do you want? Why me? Those are the three things that, and, and just ask yourself, if someone you don't know messages you, isn't that what you're thinking too? Do I know you? Why me? What do you want? Right? That's pretty normal. That's a normal thought pattern there. And so when you're reaching out to them, I would cover those three things. I'm gonna give you two different methods and two different little scripts. So first of all, let's say that you're wanting to grow in a particular area. Well, location is one of my favorite things to use when you're doing this cold market prospecting. So an example might be, hey, I know we don't know each other. I see that you're in Dallas, Texas. I'm looking to expand my business there. Would you be at all open to taking a look at what we're doing to make some extra money? I'd be happy to show it to you. And if not, no big deal. What exactly is spammy about that? That you're telling them it's okay if they don't wanna learn more? It's not spam. And so spam is assuming the position of the prospect without any evidence. So if you went to them and said, hey, I see you're in Dallas and I got a no brainer for you. I got an amazing ground floor company that you will totally love. Well, that's, that's spamming because you're assuming these things and you don't have any evidence to them, okay? And so make sure that you understand that this, this isn't spam. You're just seeing if they're open. Now, does that mean that every single person's gonna say yes? Of course not, because not every person is is interested, is open, right? Now, the second one is um, occupation. And that very, very similar, you might have guessed, but it's, hey, I know we don't know each other. I see that you're a realtor. We happen to work with a lot of realtors. Would you be open to take a look at what I'm doing to make some extra money? If not, no big deal. And so notice how interchangeable location and occupation is. And uh, you can send this, 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 this is the type of messages that have helped us help network marketers generate over 300,000 new customers in the last three years, 71,000 reps and 14,000 rank advances. So we know this stuff works. Before I get to my last point, make sure that you subscribe. And I would highly suggest that as you're learning prospecting, make sure you learn closing. We cover closing on this channel a lot. And so I wanna help you not just reach out to people, but also close some of those sales and get more customers and get more reps. So feel free to subscribe and check out, uh, check out some of our other videos. So lastly, let's talk a little bit about consistency. Now, I can tell you right now, if you're watching this video and you struggle with consistency, it's really not your fault and it's not that you're lazy. It's that you've drawn the wrong conclusion to success based on an observation you made as a kid. What? That sounds crazy, doesn't it? I have found from coaching hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people around this whole concept of consistency that that is 100% of the time the truth. So let me give you some examples and understand that your example, I may not say your example, but I want you to think about your scenarios and, and when you think about success or money or recognition, what comes up for you around those words and your parents or your upbringing of someone else you know raised you? A couple weeks ago, I coached a lady and she was just, 
you know, she would go through her business, she would do a little bit of work, and then she'd just stop, she'd just fizzle out, she'd do a little bit of work. She had big goals, but she really struggled with consistency. What I got from her was that she really just couldn't get herself to make the big effort. Just couldn't. And so I asked this question, I said, I'm just curious, at what point in your childhood did you try really, really hard, but then realize that no matter how hard you tried, it just didn't matter, right? It's a big question. And she's like, oh my God. And she remembered. She remembered using an easy bake oven to make you know, cookies or brownies or whatever she made to make some things for her dad. And so when he got home, she surprised him and she worked really hard on this stuff. And her dad was furious. He was furious that she used the kitchen ingredients and, and you know, maybe he was mad because he thought she could have hurt herself, I don't know. But it was in that moment that she created the program that said, no matter how hard I try, it just doesn't matter, so why bother? Most people are struggling with their own version of why bother. And, and so another example would be, I've coached many people that had uh, parents who, who made a lot of money and then lost it. And so what they find is they find themselves going and they'll start doing well and then all of a sudden they'll just, they'll just go the other way or they'll, they'll just stop being consistent or they'll get even more stressed out. Well, if you saw a parent make a bunch of money and lose it and get ridiculed, made fun of, downgrade in society, downgrade in, in income and, and all the things that you got to experience, then you could very well draw the conclusion that, well, you know, if I make a bunch of money, I'm just gonna lose it, so let me not make a bunch of money. If you're scared of falling off the mountain, just don't climb it. And so you have to look at and become aware of what is your programming? When you think about consistency, success, achievement, recognition, how does that resonate between you and the experience you had as a kid? And I'll give you a hint. If you have massive memory struggles of even remembering your childhood, then I guarantee you there was some kind of trauma in there and you're in a protective program. These programs, they protect you. They don't, they don't hurt you. They try to prevent you from being hurt again. And so some deep, deep stuff. And I would encourage you, I'm gonna put a link down in the description to uh, share with you some of my live coaching that I've done. Uh, we call it breakthrough coaching or uh, defiant coaching and helping people become defiant to the programs that are running them. And so I'm gonna put that link down in the description. Feel free to click that and it may help you out if you struggle with consistency.